1947. Skeptics say they were military aircraft or flares, but not the former governor. It was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. Lots of agreement on this panel. This retired Iranian Air Force pilot said he saw a UFO while flying. It looked similar to a star, but bigger and brighter. General Parviz Jafari says he tried to fire a missile, but much of his plane became inoperative. All the uh, instrument was fluctuating, the radio had garbled, even I couldn't have uh, communication with my pilot in my back seat so with operating the radar. So none of your equipment worked, your missiles didn't work. Do you think it's because this was an alien from oh, another yes. world? You sure yeah. of that? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. A group gathering here in Washington to talk about their UFO sightings, but this apparently is no crackpot convention. Former high-level government and military officials are among those sharing what they've seen in the skies. Our national correspondent Gary Tuckman is here. He's watching all of this uh, unfold. So what's this conference, Gary, all about? Well, Wolf, it's most interesting. A panel discussion within the Beltway about what might be taking place in the Milky Way and beyond. Have extraterrestrials visit us here on Earth? Well, 14 men from seven different countries participated in a panel discussion to describe why they believe UFOs have visited Earth. And these aren't guys they just picked up off the street. The panel includes former governor of Arizona, Fife Symington, who is one of many Arizonans who said they saw UFOs back in 1997 during an episode that is popularly referred to as the Phoenix Lights. Major sighting here. We want the United States government to stop perpetuating the myth that all UFOs can be explained away in down-to-earth and conventional terms. Instead, our country needs to reopen its official investigation that it shut down in 1969. Also participating was a retired Air Force captain who says he and his passengers saw a huge flying disc. Also a retired Peruvian Air Force pilot who says he came within 300 feet of a circular UFO flying at 63,000 feet. And then there is a retired U.S. Air Force security officer who, while stationed in England, was summoned to a downed aircraft in a forest. When we came up on the triangular-shaped craft, there were blue and yellow lights swirling around the exterior as though they were part of the surface. The air around us was electrically charged, and we could uh, feel it on our clothes, our skin, and our hair. UFO sightings reported right here in the nation's capital. There was a flurry of them back in July of 1952 when the Air Force investigated but was never able to solve or prove anything. Take a look at these headlines. Ariel, what's its uh, buzz? DC again. Air Force uh, after DC saucers, jets ready to chase lights. Jets ordered to hunt down flying saucers. There was a lot of hype, a lot of excitement back in 1952. To the rest of the world, especially to the Muslim world, he had a, a double message. He said this, he said, uh, for those who seek to advance their aims by inducing terror and slaughtering... Okay, I'm going to try this. This is why I think this object is not a bird. I've got it in Cam Camtasia Studio, and I'm going to advance it. You see it? You see it come out of the corner there? There it goes. See it? I've got the video in Virtual Dub. There's the object. It goes in front of the obelisk, and it goes ahead. See it? It's going. And it goes off into the distance, and it keeps going. And if that's a bird, it should be going out of view from the perspective of the people on the ground. But watch it. It just keeps going and it's still going. You see it right there? See it? And it's still going. And even there, you can see the object there. Now how big would that have to be to be a bird? See it right there? And then it goes behind the tree. You can even see it. See it going through the tree right there? You can even see that. Now if that's a bird, <clears throat> That's a damn big bird. See? So there it goes right there. I'd like for someone to analyze it and see how big the thing would have to be and how fast it would be going. But that doesn't look like a bird. And it's going in a straight line. There it gives the impression of flapping but I think that's just the camera. The 
then it zooms off, see? And it goes on back behind the tree. Just like that. See? It goes back behind the tree. Clearing behind the tree. Highlight, I think, of the conference is the footage that you've referred to, first time that it's been seen in the UK. It's being presented by uh, Haktan Ark Duggan, if I've got your name right there, Haktan. Uh, tell me about this footage and why you think it's important. Well, this extraordinary inc incident took place in Kumburgas, in Istanbul. It's a compound in Kumburgas, and it was witnessed by many people who live in the compound, and it was filmed by the security guard for almost three hours within the period of time, like two, uh, two and a half to three months period of time. Uh, there were like 18 or 17 footages. And uh, the footages are so interesting and so amazing because we see, we don't just see the lights in the sky, we see in the close-up the outline of the object. Very clearly the structure of the object is so clear and also in the June 12th uh, dated uh, footage, the UFO puts a show exactly puts the show and it turns its lights back and forth again from one side to another. This is amazing footage and it's been analyzed, the whole footage has been analyzed for more scientific but for two and a half weeks. Uh, all this footage for two, two, two and a half uh, hours were long footage for two and a half weeks. We went frame by frame, we, uh, uh, went pixel by pixel and this is a hundred percent genuine footage. But don't you think, I mean you're, you're the founder of a UFO research center in Turkey isn't this kind of thing quite easily done with cameras and uh, graphics and, and that kind of thing nowadays? I mean, you know, do you not open yourself to the accusation that, it, again, it's another hoax? Of course, it's so, it's so normal, but also uh, in our scientific team, we have some special effect uh, experts too. They analyze the footage, and we are ready to provide to provide this footage, the original footage, to any institution, even in UK, any scientific institution. They can go through their own uh, analysis, and they're going to come up with the same conclusion. After we've done all this research and analyzing this footage for two and a half weeks, that's why we're coming forward to the world first time in UK and that this is 100% uh, real footage. Just, no, just briefly, tell us about these beings that we're, we're seeing in, in some of these pictures. You say well, for the first time uh, really very clear. Yeah, in the UFO history, not only this time, uh, not only UFOs are being filmed, also in June 8th, I think, uh, segment of the f uh, footage, you see two heads, two silhouettes of uh, entities' heads uh, is clearly uh, you can tell uh, there's two heads in the craft. Not only just craft is being filmed, but also the entities is being filmed. First time ever in the UFO history. This is also what makes this footage so important worldwide. Akdan, Akdagan, thank you very much for joining us. Well, there may be a lot of skeptics around, but there are certainly also a lot of believers. The conference here uh, for the weekend has been fully uh, subscribed and is really packed out. Mike McCarthy and Pontefract at that UFO conference, thank you. Well, apparently this one of the better flying airplanes. Milton Torres is not the kind of guy to tell a tall tale. 20 years in the Air Force, an engineer with a PhD, a professor. He's all about brass tacks and left brain thinking. So I was all ears when he started talking about his UFO encounter over England in May of 1957. I got scrambled one night, and the, my first orders are, you will be ordered to fire on this mission. In just a few minutes, he was over the North Sea in a fighter like this at 31,000 feet, traveling nearly the speed of sound. In the dark and in the clouds, Milton saw the strongest signal he had ever seen on his radar screen. Bigger than sh the target was there. And the target looked like an aircraft carrier. It was that big and on a, my screen. He flew toward it to try and shoot it down. And it takes off like you're just standing like still. I wasn't even there. Like I wasn't even there. Just gone. Milton has no earthly explanation for what he saw. Could it have been a problem with the radar? Could it have been a weather phenomenon? No. Could it have been a meteor? It, Any it, of those things? It, it, everything was explained to me already. Yeah? I knew what it was. It was, it was some design of an aircraft.